My name's Jesse. And Alan, talking about movies. They may be best friends, but they always disagree. Jesse. And Alan, I see that. So, Jesse, me and you have known each other for what? How long has it been? Over 20 years? Um. Is that right? Shit, dude. I think it's been longer than that. Yeah, I think, I think so. it's been longer than 20. <laughs> it's been a long time. I think it's actually, yeah, but I would say conservatively at least 20. Yeah. Probably 25. And, uh, growing up, we used to play a ton of video games together. And Final Fantasy, I don't think I ever actually played, but I watched you and Michael play it quite a bit. Yeah, um, and the thing is, too, is, like, I don't even remember what Final Fantasy, like, like we had started playing. But, I mean, I know that uh, the one that I got really into was uh, Final Fantasy VII. Yeah, yeah, that's the that one, one I remember one awesome. the most watching. I don't think I ever had a chance to play it, but, uh, yeah. I, I watched, I, I know I watched Michael play it a ton. I think you were playing too, but I, I don't remember exactly, but, uh, I loved Final Fantasy. I loved the world. I loved the games. And when they came out with a movie, I was super excited. Then I saw the movie and I was super disappointed. Yeah, like that was kind of my whole thing was at the time, like I was like super in to Final Fantasy seven in general. I mean, just because like innovation, it's really easy to call something like innovative nowadays, but like a lot of games like really don't make that big a leap as much as they just maybe kind of improve on mm -hmm. something that another video game did well. Yeah. But like Final Fantasy seven was like huge open world, super awesome RPG that also had like games within the games. And like, I mean, even if you, did, even if you beat the game, like there was still a lot of playability in it because you could just go to the arcade and just, you know, spend all your money mm. and like play the card games and all that junk. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you just get lost. So, and that was the same thing. Like, I'm like, you know what? Like, that kind of made me want to go back and play all the older Final Fantasy uh, games. Then, like, even some of the ones that came out after that, like Final Fantasy Tactics and whatever. Yeah. So then, yeah, when the movie came out, I'm thinking, oh, yeah, I'm definitely going to see this movie because I love all things Final Fantasy. And, uh, yeah, so I, I don't think I actually... Um, I don't think I saw it in the movie theaters. I think I actually, I think I actually rented it. Okay. Yeah. I, say. I, I remember having it on VHS, but I don't think I've ever watched it more than once or twice, even back when I was a kid. Cause it, so we're again, I mean, the title of this podcast is going to be Final Fantasy, the spirits within, but I guess we never said what we're talking about, but it's the uh, 2001 <laughs> Final Fantasy, uh, spirits within movie that was one of the first completely computer rendered, rendered movies. Um, and it was like a big deal cause it's supposed to be like photorealistic and, you know, the most advanced, uh, CGI undertaking for a movie. And, uh, it, oh yeah, it, it looks good oh, still, yeah. but, uh, I don't know. I, I, the, there, it's a little creepy. The, uh, Dude, I think it was like way ahead of its time. Oh like, yeah. You know, when it came out in 2001, mm -hmm. I was like, holy shit. I was like, this, this is the epitome of what you expect from CGI. Yeah. Like I was, I was so blown away by how badass it looked for, a, you know, completely like computer generated type animation. Like it was just incredible. And so that was like another major motivator for wanting to watch it. Mm. But, um, and I actually, I looked into it, um, since you were saying that like it was, this ended up, uh, getting an award, a Guinness, uh, book world record award, for being the most expensive animated movie uh, based on a video game. Okay. So in 2001, it actually won a Guinness World Record for being the most expensive <laughs> uh, video, uh, video game movie. This is pretty cool. I think the only other award that it actually won mm. was for the soundtrack. 
which wasn't bad. Yeah. So. Yeah, so the budget for this was $137 million. Which is huge. In 2001, I mean, that's a big budget now. Yeah. I think. And uh, sort of. <laughs> opening weekend, it got $11 million. And worldwide gross, <laughs> it got $85 million. So there's still about Dude, that's like $50 million in the hole on this movie. That's like a water world fail. <laughs> <laughs> so that movie was like tanked so bad because like their whole water set like sunk and had to build it again. <laughs> I like that movie. I haven't seen it for a long time, but I enjoyed it when I saw it. I know people I hate it. I actually did like it too. I actually did like it too. I was actually like, why did this movie do so bad? I thought it was cool. Yeah. I mean, it's <laughs> like, it, even when I went back and watched it as an adult, it wasn't even that I didn't like it just being a kid. Like I went back and watched it. I'm like, yeah, this movie's decent. Yeah. It's Mad Max on a boat. Mm-hmm. I'm sure that's what they sold it exactly. as too. But, uh, yeah, this, uh, one of the things that kind of stood out to me rewatching Final Fantasy again was I think the, uh, the sets, if you want to call them that, the uh, the backgrounds, mm-hmm. I think those were all static yeah. pictures. I don't think those were 3D rendered. And they just imposed the characters into it. And so there's like this weird green screen effect, even with the characters. And so when the characters mm-hmm. would interact, they didn't feel like they had any weight to them. They didn't feel like they like did anything to the world around them. They just seemed like the characters were the only thing alive. So wait, you're talking crap about the lack of how great the CGI was in 2001 when the most popular chat at the time for the internet was America Online. (laughs) I'm not talking crap. (laughs) I'm just saying it stood out to me this time watching it. Like there's something uh, unnatural about, uh, about the way everything worked. And I think that might be part of it, where the the backgrounds, the like world, the physics was off. Like yeah, the physics engines were very good. Yeah, they like the characters seemed to be the only thing animated. Everything else was uh, more static, and then they just imposed things on top of it. Yeah, I, mean, I guess I could see that. You know, you see something and it looks badass at the time. You just don't really see all the all the uh, like wonky bullshit yeah. until you like rewatch it. Yeah, whereas like, like Black Panther. I mean, shit. Even if you watched, oh. Black Panther, don't even get me started. I was gonna use Star Wars. <laughs> it's like in Star Wars, you know, when you see like spaceships like going across the screen, yeah. and like you're looking at, uh, you know, in space, you know, the black should be ultra black, but as the ships are going by, like you can actually see the little green squares kind of bloop, 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 like as they go across the screen mm. on like the old versions. Yeah. yeah. And they polished them out in some of the DVDs and stuff, but you can still glaringly see them <laughs> on like old VHS tapes that I still have. Yeah. It's bad. I was like, holy shit, how did I not see that? Like it's a fucking <laughs> square around a ship. <laughs> I, w- around. I always think about, uh, the, I think it was the second Robocop where the, uh, the big mech dog thing. Do you remember, you know what I'm talking about at oh, all? Oh yeah. I, I remember yeah, being yeah. so afraid of that as a kid the first time I saw it. And then I, <laughs> I watched it like 10 years later and I was like, wow, this looks awful. This is so bad. It's clearly like when it blew up, movie. it just looked like so retarded, right? Yeah. Like it didn't, you're just like, what? Like what happened? And you just kind of, it's funny yeah. how <laughs> stuff like that works where when it's new, like there's that old story about, uh, the first video. Uh, in a theater was that train coming at the screen and people freaked out and uh-huh. ran out. And I think someone had a heart attack, <laughs> and, but like, <laughs> it's so, so basic now, you know, like you, you would see that and you would never think anything of it, but because it's new, it's mm-hmm. like your brain has a hard time computing it. And, uh, yeah. so stuff like this, stuff like final fantasy and, uh, you know, just graphics in general or star Wars, the original, when it came out uh-huh. in the seventies or, Robocop, whatever. When you see it, you're like, wow, this is amazing. And then things like Avatar come out or, you know, whatever, like things that are much further advanced than what it is that it really dates it. Well, heck, I mean, you're talking about things that scared you, like the, um, like the little mech from Robocop 2. Like for me, growing up, things scared the hell out of me 
was uh like the child's play Chucky doll. Yeah. And so like you go back and rewatch that and I'm just like, holy shit. Like this thing was so dumb. <laughs> uh, I can you know it, like the, the the little legs flopping and just like all the little shit that goes on in the movie. I'm yeah. just like, wow, this is kinda terrible. You what? know, just like the movements are actually very robotic. <laughs> like, you know, you're like, Oh my god, it's alive. <laughs> Uh, were you there when my you, my grandpa put it on for us when we were kids? It was, no, I wasn't. I, I remember <laughs> me, Zeke, and Emily. We were like five. He put it on for us in the back room on that old big TV <laughs> they used to have back there. And we were mm-hmm. all terrified. And then in my bedroom, my grandma had that doll that looked just like the Chucky doll. And oh it my god, yes. Scared me so much. <laughs> Dude, if like me and Michael were in that room and that doll was around, like we would get it and like turn its face and like put it in the closet and like put shit on top of it. <laughs> it's like, creepy. We're like, you know, just just to just to be safe. Like yeah. just in case it were to come alive, like it's gonna have to come through a bunch of crap and we'll have to find a run. Because <laughs> yeah. it, it wasn't in, like a, a a licensed Chucky doll, but it was a no, yeah. It, it was, wasn't a good guy doll. It was like some other bullshit, but it looked just like it. Yeah, it was like exactly the same. It was like, I wonder if they based it off of that doll. I'm sure they did. Like, it was probably like a, like, uber ripoff, but it was probably like half off of Toys R Us. Yeah. Back when Toys R Us used to sell like wooden rifles that looked like <laughs> real ones. <laughs> Cause there's stories like with Halloween, the movie, where they just took a William Shatner mask, flipped it inside out, and spray painted it white. Like, the prop departments <laughs> are, I mean, they're super impressive what they can do, but they're kind of yeah. reaching for the closest thing they can get, you know? They're not, they're not yeah. looking to take extra steps if they don't have to. But, uh, yeah. Do you, do you remember the story about the spirits within? Like, I remember just like threatens the earth and like these damn spirits can like, hit you and like it like knocks your soul out of your body and whatever. <laughs> yeah. Like sucks it's your like, soul right out. So yeah. Like I, they I remember that, but like not much else. There's like an alien planet that was at war with itself. And then, uh, one of the sides decides to just destroy the whole planet. Like, I think that was their, their like, we're going to win at any cost. And so they just kill everyone. And, uh, so like Ender's game, so uh, like Ender's game, just destroy the planet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> they, they turn into ghosts and end up on, I think Earth or I don't, I don't know. I assume it's Earth. Um, where all the characters are and are killing people just left and right. Cause they, if they touch anyone, they just suck out their spirit. Yeah. The like soul just like falls out of you. Uh, the main it falls out of you. Like a poop falling out of your butt after you eat a burrito with extra guacamole sauce. I think I think that's what the example <laughs> Alec Baldwin uses in this movie. Yeah. Yeah. That was a speech he gave. Um, <laughs> you know what's funny is how many A-listers are actually in this damn like movie as voiceovers. There's you a mentioned ton. Baldwin. Yeah, so Alec There's Baldwin like is Dean the... Rames and Steve Buscemi mm-hmm. and Donald uh, Sutherland. I think it's James Woods, yeah, Donald Sutherland. I'm the, just like, holy shit, dude. The the main girl, Ming Na Win, I, I think that's how she pronounced it. I, I could be wrong. Uh she was the voice yeah. of Mulan. She's been in a ton of different stuff. Like everyone in this movie. Oh, so she was a heavy hitter too. Like I didn't recognize her right away, but yeah. But it it bothered me so much rewatching it, hearing Mulan's voice coming out of this this <laughs> character. It like threw me <laughs> off so hard. Um but I, I mean, that's got to be where all the budget went into. They like really the freaking cast. Yeah. yeah. They like really went hard in the paint for this. And, uh, it was a big swing and a miss. That's probably why the animation wasn't so good. I mean, like it was good for its time, mm-hmm. but it probably could have been better, but it all went to payroll. Yeah. Well, so like Final Fantasy seven was kind of the first one in the video games to start doing like these really intense cutscenes. Uh, oh yeah. And I mean, they were, they look great, especially for like PlayStation one. And then you had, uh, I think final fantasy eight was better. I mean, obviously, I mean, it came out later. Final fantasy eight looked, I think it, to me, it kind of looked like, uh, 
I mean, it kind of had like that Resident Evil kind of looking, you know, like they tried to be a little bit more realistic, mm-hmm. you know, with what it looked like yeah. as opposed to like the more cartoony anime looking characters you got from Final Fantasy VII. Yeah. I hated it. Really? I did not like it at all. That's my favorite. Yeah. One. I like pretty much like skipped over that thing. I was like, this is hot garbage. Why? <laughs> And then when uh, Final Fantasy IX came out, I was like, oh, yay, because Final Fantasy IX, I felt like borrowed a lot of stuff from what made Final Fantasy VII better, mm. as far as like what the characters look like, the style, and kind of like the gameplay in general. Yeah. So I was like super happy when they came out with IX, because I was like, oh, okay, because I was about to like wash my hands of Final Fantasy <laughs> when they had eight. It's funny, because like, it's like I, I the like, exact so opposite mad. of me. I was annoyed when I well, played nine and it was like more cartoony than eight was. <laughs> See, I had a buddy who was the same way. He was like, uh, seven's okay. He played eight, fucking loved it. And then he played nine and he was like, Ur. and I'm like, dude, you're done. <laughs> I was like, you're not even my friend anymore. I was like, stay at your house. I was like, we're, we're done. <laughs> and uh, it was like two days later, I forgave him and told him it's okay to have bad taste in video games. <laughs> 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 oh man. But, uh, so yeah, the, the seven, Final Fantasy seven, Final Fantasy eight, nine, they really put in a lot of effort into the cutscenes. Like, it was yeah. dramatically different from the actual gameplay, where you'd have these, uh, really terrible looking sprites. Like, I don't know when the last time you've played Final Fantasy seven is, but in my head, it's what the Final Fantasy seven movie looks like. And that's not what the game looks like at all. Honestly, the movie probably would have been better if they would have done it in the cutscene format that you saw from Final Fantasy VII. Yeah. If they had done it just like that and didn't try to make it like ultra realistic, like try to make the CGI characters look like people. Yeah. Like real people, but actually just kind of kept with that style. From those cutscenes that you're talking about, mm-hmm. it would have been incredible. It would have been way better. Well, I and think it still would have been awesome for its time. Yeah, I think, I think that's what they were kind of going. I think that was kind of their idea, but they're like, let's really push it. Like, I think they they took the the reaction of the cutscenes from seven, eight, nine, and like, well, we could, let's just make a full on movie, but let's really push it and try to make this look like actual people. And I think that's why well, they, they did. took a misstep. Is they took a, yeah, they, they, they took a good idea and then turned it into a shit sandwich. <laughs> I mean, cause if you think about it, like Hollywood takes, you know, good ideas all the time. And then like how many times do they like just jumble it up mm. because they try to do too much with it? Yeah. Like, okay. Perfect example is like Deadpool. Like when they did Deadpool, mm-hmm. the story was pretty simple. You know, Ryan Reynolds wanted it to stay with, like the idea of what Deadpool is. Yeah. And even though, you know, there wasn't like much to the movie itself in like the, the simplistic story that it was, it worked mm. and it was good. And it was actually a good thing that they actually stuck to, you know, like what Ryan Reynolds suggested they do and sticking with like the spirit of that type of movie. Yeah. Cause had they done something different with it or tried to, you know, go over the top with it and like, you know, make an ultra, blockbuster and do all this extra crap it Wolverine probably wouldn't origins? be good yeah wolverine origins perfect example <laughs> i mean i mean you saw what deadpool looked like in that it was stupid yeah and it's funny in the cutscenes for the trailer that they're promoting for deadpool 2 they actually you know like so in the first deadpool he makes fun of green lantern right i and haven't so seen in the, the trailer one. for oh you have it mm. oh man so in the first movie he makes fun of Green Lantern, like his character, because like, you know, that got panned hard. Yeah. So in this trailer for part two, um, I don't know if you remember the scene with, uh, the with swords, the, um, you know, the, in the hallway. Yeah. The, yeah. The, 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 the swords Deadpool in the like really crappy movie. Yeah. Um, so you remember that scene where he runs into a room and he's throwing the swords around and he's like, he blocks like every single bullet doesn't get hit at all. Yeah. And he's like cutting them in half and shooting people with yeah. reflective. Yeah. It's really bad. Yeah. Yeah. So in, in, in the Deadpool trailer, he does that whole thing while Cable's shooting at him. And like after Cable's done shooting and he's like dry, 
he looked like he deflected some of the bullets and then he looks down and he's been shot like 10 times. He's <laughs> 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 like, well, that didn't work very well. <laughs> it's, it's funny. But like, yeah, that's, a, you know, the kind of thing is like, you know, if you, if you're more, if you're more true to like the, the original idea, yeah. I think people are going to just be generally more happy with you as opposed to like trying to do some like extra bullshit that like nobody asked you to do. Yeah. You know? So well, the thing too, what about this movie is a Final Fantasy movie? Like what is, what makes this Final Fantasy? There's nothing about it that feels anything like any of the games. To me, it's, it was like, we're going to make this sci-fi movie a Final Fantasy genre movie because it's sci-fi. Mm. I right? wonder I wonder like, if it was the same team who makes the, the games. The same team. Who, who like works on the know. animation. And so that's what they're like, oh, it's almost like uh, uh, Tyler Perry's whatever, whatever. Like this is Final Fantasy's The Spirits Within, if that was more of the idea. Because this is definitely, this has nothing to do with any of the games. It doesn't relate in any way. Like, I, I feel like, you know, they kind of just borrowed from, uh, you know, some of, like, the ecosystem of Final Fantasy and, mm. like, the style of how things were done in, like, yeah. 7 and 8 and all that kind of stuff. They just kind of, like, borrowed those ideas and concepts, you know, mm-hmm. made a really bitchin' sci-fi movie that is, you know, super heavy CGI. And then, you know, of course, call it Final Fantasy, which is, was incredibly huge, you know, at the time period. I mean, it's already a popular, you know, game title to begin with. Yeah. I mean, it's especially in Japan, but, you know, to then lend a easily recognizable game title to something they're doing with in the movie, you know, they're hoping that that's gonna, they're gonna bank on that popularity. Which again, you know, was kind of like, you know, Hollywood kind of running away with something they could have done, you know, really well with. You know, if they would have made something like that had a good Final Fantasy storyline, like you saw in any of their games. Yeah. It probably would have been awesome. It would have, it would have had it been 124 totally hours though. Yeah. It would have been like super long. <laughs> so they made some, you know, junky, you know, storyline that could be wrapped up really quickly. Yeah. You know, I mean, cause back then it was, you know, how many, how many movies back then like really went, you know, beyond an hour and 45, you know, it's, I mean, even now still, it's pretty rare that you get a movie that's like two and a half hours. Yeah. Cause those aren't like movie theater friendly length films. They yeah. can't pump out, you know, as many movies and make as much money on concessions and everything else. If people aren't rotating out of the movies as quickly. Yeah. Which is why they hardly ever get made because the movie theaters don't like it. Yeah. Other well, people seem to like uh, Infinity War quite a bit, but uh, that's not really. Well, shit, that was <laughs> Infinity War. I mean, heck, I mean, in 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 in, uh, in town, mm-hmm. there's movie theaters that have like there's like a movie theater that has like a shit like ten or twelve theaters. Like six of the theaters have Infinity War. So. Oh yeah. That's it, 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 like like six of the freaking theaters have. I mean, because they even have, so they have like six that have Infinity Wars, and then you know, like they, you know, the other six theaters, you know, have you know other films. Mm-hmm. There's movies that are still out at other theaters that like two other theaters don't have because they have so many movies, like so many of their theaters playing Infinity Wars, mm-hmm. just so that Infinity War has like a million movie times. Yeah. What do you think but of Infinity War? I've already saw, dude, it was incredible. Yeah, like honestly, I saw it twice. I watched it Friday. I couldn't watch it Thursday because I had a podcast to do, and then I, so I mean, I normally see it on Thursday, so I was like kind of super bummed. But I went Friday, like right after I got off of work, and then uh, my wife was out of town, so when she came back in Sunday, I took her to see it Monday, and. Yeah, it was just as good the second time around. Yeah. I, I honestly, I loved it. Yeah. It was great. Cause we were fighting I mean, a little like, bit about it exactly over on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> just a smidge. Cause I think it's kind of pointless. Yeah. See, I'm like, okay, I'm not going to control. Like, I don't know where you're going with 
that, and so I'm just like, I'm not even going to touch it. It's like, I'm not going to start a Facebook argument or a movie. <laughs> like, how, it's like, how dare you? It's like, how dare you talk about my movie that I invested my hard-earned money in? You know? I, but no, I, I mean, honestly, it was exactly what you expected from Infinity Wars. You yeah. know, having read the comics, like, it was pretty close. Yeah. Uh, and, like, I felt like is. I mean, how many movies do you see that have, like, famous people in it mm-hmm. that, like, just tank? You know, you get too many famous people in it, and it sucks. Yeah. Like, Marvel's done, like, a like perfect a job of, it. like, having a good equilibrium and balancing, like, all these awesome characters. Yeah. You know, like, introducing them in such a way that it doesn't feel rushed. Hello, DC. Well, the, you know, take notes. The Russo brothers are great with characters. Yeah. They, they handle their characters really, really well to where, like, the focus on who who's important in the scene they seem to like really understand who the audience is going to care about mm-hmm. without without taking away from the other people like you think about thor on the the guardians of the galaxy spaceship and they uh-huh. that was thor scene everyone else was supporting him but it wasn't it didn't yeah. like it didn't make them pointless it didn't like take away from them but they really knew and they really know how to do like they're really good directors. They, they, their focus, their attention is done really well opposed to something like star Wars, the latest one, the audience, at least my opinion was Kylo Ren was the most interesting character. The filmmakers felt that way, but they had to tell the story from the other view and really struggled with this conflicting, like, well, he's the best character. He's the most interesting. This is where all the attention is getting drawn to, but he's not our main character. This is, you know, it's, it's, uh, right. What's her name? What? Rin? Is that, that's not right. What's her name? Is um, it Rin? I think it's Rin. Yeah. I could, uh, yeah. But, uh, so like, I think, there, right. I think there's like this conflict on the screen of, where the attention is being drawn and where they're trying to put it at, where the Russos are really good at like, you know, this is where the attention is going to go. So let's just put it there. Yeah. You know, and I mean, a lot of it's, a lot of it's fan service too. I mean, Mm -hmm. I think they're just kind of, you know, as long as it makes people happy, like, I don't think they're really concerned with, uh, you know, any of that stuff. Oh, yeah. and it's not Ren, it's Ray. Ray. Ray, close. Ray. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's a lot of fan service for sure. Like, I don't think it's necessarily like as big a concern. I mean, cause like that, you know, since we're talking about Star Wars, you know, the Han Solo movies coming out pretty soon. Uh-huh. And when I saw that, I'm kind of like, that was going to suck. Yeah, it's, it's going to stupid. be bad. And, oh, and I read all kinds of stuff that like, you know, uh, Production was like super slow because like the directors were like kind of uncomfortable. They weren't really used to doing something on that big a scale. Mm. They were taking like a million takes for stuff that only takes like four. Yeah. And that, you know, they got, you know, they'd taken so long that they had to leave. That was like 10% of the movie left. And then you had a more experienced person come in and finish it up. Meanwhile, the main character who plays on solo, which I can't think of his name right now, the, act- the actual actor's name, but, um, like he had to actually get um an acting coach to help him capture the essence of what makes him Han Solo mm. because everybody expected him to be like a certain way and kind of, you know, recreate the swagger mm-hmm. that Harrison Ford had with the Han Solo character that he just wasn't getting. Yeah. And so like you hear that a dude who's the main character in a movie <laughs> has to have an acting coach. Meanwhile, you have all this bullshit happening with like the director and then like they have to have another director come in and kind of fix everything, you know, and get it. It's like, really? Mm-mm, that doesn't sound good, but I'm a true Star Wars fan. So even with all the negative I've said about that movie, I'm still going to go see it. Yeah. I just have to know. I have to know if it's really going to be, you know, a hot mess. Oh, it's definitely going to be bad. Complain. It's going to be really bad. <laughs> um, I'm really hoping it's not like, I don't want to see it be like, you know, I don't want to see a dumpster fire, but you know, we'll, we'll see. I'll I, hold, I'll, I'm not going to hold my breath, but 
I wish they wouldn't have called it Solo. I wish they would have buried the lead on that and not let you know that Han Solo was the main character. Mm-hmm. And then just show... Maybe tell, like you put it together for yourself? Like, yeah. Tell, tell his, like what, to tell like a general story? Yeah. Tell his origin story and then just let people figure it out who... Like, if you really know his story, uh, his origin story, if you know what happens and how it all works together, you'll figure it out really quick. But the general audience is not going to know until they reveal it at the end. And I think that would have been a, a, a cooler or more interesting way to do it, in my opinion. But I think Disney just wanted to draw as many people as possible. Yeah. Because I mean, that's Han why they Solo bought a Star Wars. Character. I mean, obviously, you're going to use Solo. You're going to use Solo. Everybody loves Han Solo. I mean, if anything, I think a Solo movie would pull more ticket sales than a Skywalker movie. I mean, you already know what Skywalker's like origin is, right? Mm-hmm. But I'm saying, like, if we didn't, and then they did a Skywalker origin story, and then they did a Solo origin story, like everybody's gonna be like, "Oh yeah, I'm gonna go see Solo first. And then yeah. if I have any money left in my pocket, then I'll go see Skywalker." <laughs> you know? Yeah. But yeah, it'll be. I mean, that's definitely what it is. Because I mean, what would marketing be like? A Star Wars story, mystery character reveal. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're like what? <laughs> I, I don't know. I maybe you could do it. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It, that would be tough, but it also it just being Star Wars, I think, would be enough to people would show up for it. You know, you're like in a time when a random established character <laughs> did a race in a certain amount of parsecs. <laughs> like, they're like, wait, I think on Solo, but not. <laughs> <laughs> like these sly Disney execs. Yeah, <laughs> no, that's a fair point. It probably would have fallen apart pretty quick, but uh, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It would have been cool, I think, like if they could have pulled it off, but it, it would have been tough. Um, uh, but yeah, yeah, I think they, I think they might. Spirits within. Yeah, like so. Any, you're like yeah. So anyway, so uh, Final <laughs> Fantasy. <laughs> uh, what do you think about movies that are based on video games? Um, I mean, movies based on video games to me are just like, I mean, I, I put, I, I mean, I put them on the same level as like just movies based on comic books. Mm. I mean, and ultimately, it just all comes down to like who gets the property yeah, and who chooses to respect the property mm. for why it's awesome. Yeah. You know, a game, a game, uh, a movie based on a game is going to be garbage no matter who gets it. If the person that gets it, gets it for the name only yeah, to make money, uh, you know, as quickly as possible without respecting the source material. Mm. I mean, his, you know, I mean, that, that goes for, you know, like Fox, Sony, what there's, you know, some of their Spider-Man movies, you know, the Final Fantasy, you know, uh, Fantastic Four movies. You know, I mean, pretty much everything that's not owned by Marvel and Disney. Yeah. You know, that has to get borrowed by these other production companies. You know, you can clearly see that there's less dedication, time and commitment and just like forethought for like, you know, looking into the future of like developing storylines. Yeah that there's less care involved in it. They're just like, oh, let's pump out this movie. It's going to be awesome. And then we'll figure it out in five years when we decide to make the second one. Whereas, like, I mean, now, you're, you know, you, you're watching uh, Avengers Infinity War, and you're just like, holy shit, like, this has been unraveling for, like, 15 years. Mm. You know, and this is, like, the master plan. You know, they actually have phases. You know, like, they already know what's going to happen, like, five years from now. And, like, that's awesome. But, like, you know, I, I think the reputation for movie-based, uh, you know, games or movies that are based on games just, I mean, I think tend to get a bad rap just because I think really, I mean, they do have like the worst track record. Yeah. I mean, in terms of like just being lucky and getting somebody that like actually wants to do well by the game. I mean, it's kind of like a, I mean, I mean, shoot. I mean, up until Marvel and Disney, it was, that was the same way with freaking, uh, superhero movies. 
I mean, pretty much. Yeah. It wasn't until Sp- yeah, Marvel come along. I think S- Spider-Man 1 and like the first two X-Men's were really good. And then everyone was just like, well, that's the formula. Let's just copy that. Mm-hmm. And then it got really bad for a little bit. And then Marvel like kind of figured it out and fixed it. So yeah. what? DC is, uh, yeah, not I mean, doing a great job, but he's not on the- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like, look at this point, you're admit you're bad and blatantly copy everything Marvel does and people will love you for it. <laughs> <laughs> like don't, don't try to make your own special like thing mm. because like what they're doing is just not working. I mean, I can say that I kind of like some of the movies that they've done, yeah. but it's because like I really went in with an open mind and tried to like find the best parts of, you know, their movies. Cause yeah. like if I was just not a fan of comics or anything and went into these movies, I'd be like, this is shit, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. I think video <laughs> games, like, I think video games have a hard time transferring to movies because generally you are playing a shell of a character. And the whole world is built around that. And so you mm-hmm. kind of like when you read a book and you build the, what the character looks like in your head and how they sound and kind of their cadence and all that. And then you see the movie and you're like, Whoa, that's not what I thought this character would be like or not who I w- would expect or anything like that. So when you do that with mm-hmm. a video game and you take that main character and you put them in the movie, then it just is like, Oh no, this is not at all what I wanted or what I thought. This is the, the world is the uh is the the main thing not the characters and so things that take the use the world and tell a story inside of that like use it as a frame and tell a story inside of that i think work a lot better mm-hmm. um but it has to capture the heart like there has to be a reason to tell that story um i so like with winter soldier they told a, like a, um, like a suspense thriller inside a comic book movie. Like they didn't, right. it wasn't, it wasn't, they weren't necessarily telling a Captain America story. They're using the film structure a way, you know, your, your characters and your, your story beats and all that. They used that structure and then placed the comic book elements into that. And I think that's why that works so well. Where video games are like, oh, let's just take it and turn it into a movie and it really starts to fall apart quickly. Well, like a a, a movie that was done well, that was based on a video game, mm-hmm. I mean, pretty well. I mean, it definitely could have been better. I have a lot of critiques for it. But um, I thought Warcraft the movie did a pretty decent job of trying to bring you know, that, that whole, whole world uh-huh. and like fit it into, uh, you know, a theatrical release, you know, that's only like two hours long. Yeah. I mean, cause there's so much source material to the world of Warcraft. Mm. And, um, you know, like I said, they could have done certain stuff better, but I think considering like kind of how long it took them to finally get the movie off the ground that, you know, what they ultimately produced was decent, you know, wasn't very well received, you know, stateside is because like Warcraft is kind of popular, you know, in the U S mm. um, you know, but it's definitely like more popular overseas for sure. Yeah. And so even though it technically um, was a box office bomb stateside, it was a hugely successful movie in like Europe and Asia. Yeah. It made and like you know, so it, it didn't it didn't end up in the red. It was definitely solidly in the black, but it was due to overseas ticket sales. Mm. Um, you know, something I there's no telling whether or not they'll actually make a you know a Warcraft two. They should, and I hope they do. But um, you know, like that movie, I thought it did a pretty good job of like trying to honor the source material. I mean, but obviously the people that made the movie are also the people that like you know actually own the property, yeah. you know, and, and aren't the game developers. So, I mean, that's part of it as opposed to like them just, you know, allowing somebody to make a movie based on their crap and yeah. do a terrible job. Um, 
hey, we can talk about that movie next time. <laughs> yeah, I still haven't seen it. What? I yeah. need to see it, dude. I'll watch it again just to just to be all fresh. Yeah. No, yeah, that'd be fun. Yeah, a lot of I uh I get a small window of opportunity to see movies on the big screen or in the theater. And uh mm-hmm. generally it's only one in English. And I, I don't remember if that one came through or not. Which one? World of Warcraft. Like you play it in English or you have like a copy of the movie to watch it? No, when it when it was out, when it was in theaters, I don't think it came uh-huh. through that my town on the theater. We we generally oh. have one movie in English a week and then if there's like a big release, that will be in there for two weeks. But so we don't get a lot of turnover on what movies are playing in English. And so then oh, if I, I if I don't see it in theater, the chances of me going back and remembering to watch it when it comes out gets lower and lower the longer it goes. Yeah, I think at this point it's maybe been out like a, like two years. I think so, yeah. It's been a little bit. But yeah, no, that would be fun. Yeah. But uh, yes, it would. overall, Final Fantasy, thumbs up, thumbs down. How do you feel about it? It's like a sideways thumb. <laughs> <laughs> it's not something like I'd recommend somebody watch because yeah. like I wouldn't say like, oh, you have to watch this like because you're not going to have, you know, have a complete life without watching this movie. <laughs> like you can definitely like skip over that whole movie and like, you know, be in, you know, uh, content with like the amount of stuff that you know about Final Fantasy without mm. ever visiting that movie. Yeah. And then at the same time, like if you are a, a fan and you want to see like an oops that they did, you know, just so that you can like complete your, your good and your horrible, you know, Final Fantasy knowledge, then like you definitely want to visit this movie. Yeah. And then I still want to kind of give it props for like being kind of ahead of its time in terms of like quality CGI for the time period and the amount of money that they invested as far as like time and all that stuff. Story wise, kind of garbage. So like I feel like it's more like a, like a, Tech, like technical stuff that they did mm. for me, it kind of makes me like it. But just like the movie overall, as a story, um, as a storyline, and kind of all that stuff, like makes it not so good. Yeah, that's kind of why I'm like on the fence about you know wanting to you know condemn it. Yeah, the dark depths of hell. Yeah, I think so. if you appreciate an animation and kind of the journey that movies have made. It's pretty cool as a time capsule to see how much further advanced this movie was versus other movies that were coming around this time. But yeah. the story is terrible. The story is so boring. <laughs> yes. And uh the action scenes are so slow paced that it's like <sighs> it's kinda like They're telegraphing the movie. Oh yeah, it's really, really bad. <laughs> it's like Yeah. It uh so I, as a movie experience, it's not good. If you appreciate the yeah. CG, you'll, you, it'll be interesting to look at and dissect or whatever. Yeah, but. that was that. And I think that was kind of my point that, that you said is just that, yeah, as a, as a time capsule of how far we've come, that's what makes this movie cool. Yeah. For you to look back and be like, wow, they did that back then. Wow. That's pretty, pretty cool. And then. You know, if you look at other movies that try to do what they did, you're like, holy shit, that's, <laughs> they, they did way better than those other guys, <laughs> you know? Yeah. But, but, but why? But why the story? <laughs> yeah. But, uh, so. can you tell me about your podcast? Um, sure. Uh, it's, it's called the uh, conversationalist. I actually, um, upload it on, uh, on SoundCloud and then it goes to iTunes as well. And, uh, me and my wife, Amanda, um, normally, uh, kind of keep up with like current events that are coming up and, and like talk about those, whether it relates to like comics, um, you know, movies, uh, television shows. I mean, anything pop culture that you would see, um, come up like in a convention, like if it, com- if it's going to be at a convention and it's interesting and like, you know, they would maybe do a panel on it. And we probably will talk about it. Um, so, you know, upcoming movies that we want to see, you know, we'll speculate on all that kind of stuff. Or uh, and then we also do, you know, like movie reviews on stuff, you know, kind of like kind of like you do. Uh, we we tend to 
um, review new stuff. Yeah. So like for us, like for us, typically we are reviewing the movies when they come out the weekend of. Mm. If we're behind, we'll usually see them within a week's time. So like tomorrow, um, we're going to go uh, check out that movie Overboard that came out. And oh, then we're going to do a movie review. Oh, yeah. The remake. We're do that looks with awful. The, yeah. With that looks that so bad. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I don't have high hopes for it, yeah. <laughs> but I'm going into it with an open mind because I was a diehard fan of the original, the original Kurt Russell. Kurt Russell. Song, <laughs> and I've seen it like a thousand times. So see, like, here's the problem. Gonna, I'm going to go see the, <laughs> the, the problem with that was the original was so politically incorrect. And they're, they're making this it's one. so good. Uh, it's going to be more PC and it's not going to work for the, the, the idea of the story. I don't know, man. I, I, I don't mean I that. Mean, I'm not trying to solely your, your, uh, view before you go in, but just from my, from watching the trailer, I was like, oh, this is not going to work. You can't do this. It's, well, you're kidnapping someone and tricking them into thinking you're married to them so you can get their money. Yeah. And you can't do that in a, a nice way. Like it, right. it needs I mean, to like, be gritty or it needs to be like, I don't know, like Kurt Russell was semi abusive to Goldie Hawn and that's what made that work. Yeah. He was a jerk. And, and, and the thing is too, it's like, I kind of felt like, uh, like blasphemous, blasphemy, <laughs> you know, when, they, when they were remaking Overboard yeah. in general, mm. no, you can't remake that. That's a classic. Yeah. You know, but nowadays classics aren't, uh, untouchable. So, you know, for me, it was kind of like, okay, I already have reservations about how good this movie's going to be. Um, but me and Amanda, we have, um, a movie pass subscription. Yeah. We only pay like 10 bucks a month and we yeah. get to see like one movie every day for the whole month. So like, you know, that's part of the reason we watch movies like as much as we do, mm. uh, because we have that subscription and like pays for itself after yeah. you've seen more than one movie. Mm-hmm. So we're going to check out Overboard. We're going to see how that movie does. And then we're also going to do a comparison to the original. Um, I'm pretty sure it's not going to be in the new Overboard's favor, but you know, maybe I'll be surprised tomorrow and it will be, I'll be pleasantly surprised that, you know, maybe hopefully. Yeah. I mean, hopefully. Uh, my my hope for every movie I see is that it's gonna be the best movie I've ever seen, but when I see the trailers, I'm like, oh, this this is gonna be a, a tough one to to hit that mark. Yeah, I hope I hope it's I hope it's decent. So yeah, I have, I'm, I'm I'm going into it with an open mind. Yeah, I mean, sort of, sort of. <laughs> I mean, I don't think it should have been made. But <laughs> is uh, you know, we're gonna go watch it anyways. So. Is upgrade on your uh, your radar? It's coming out next month, June first. That looked pretty cool. Yeah, I'm like yeah. super excited uh, for that one. Yeah, I, I definitely, I definitely want to see that. There's, there's actually like I have a crap ton of movies on my list. I yeah. mean, uh, you know, you have Deadpool two coming out. You have the Han Solo movie coming out. Like Overboard's already out. Like I've already seen like four or five um new movies uh that have that have come out recently. Like I think within the past couple of days, uh I'm trying to think. We did movie reviews on um so the last movie reviews we've done we did uh we did one on Pacific Rim, um Uprising. Mm. We did one on Blockers, uh we did one on a quiet place. Yeah, I got a we problem with that Super review. Troopers too. By the way, <laughs> you do. <laughs> yeah, Quiet Place is good. <laughs> you guys are wrong. <laughs> you, you listen to it, huh? Yeah. Yeah, we were just kind of like, eh. and then uh, we did one on Super Troopers too, and then we did one on I Feel Pretty, which was I honestly was like super surprised with because like I do not like the main characters. You know, I don't like uh, what's her face. Um, I always forget her like name. name. It's like always. I always forget her name too. Um, like I, I read about her um a bunch, and like I just, god dang it, I'm, I'm gonna lose my mind over it now. Amy Schumer. Uh, yeah, Amy Schumer. Like, I mean, she's been funny in like one of the movie, and I, well, you just went and saw the movie because it was kind of like, okay, we've already seen all the other movies, let's watch this movie. And so we went, and I was actually 
actually like incredibly surprised. It actually has a lot of uh, similarities to Shallow How. Uh, to a certain extent, I think that they did enough on their own to like make it their own movie, mm. and it's just like loosely similar to uh, Shallow How. But I, I actually ended up liking that movie. And then, of course, Inveng- uh, Avengers: Infinity War. Yeah. So, you know, I think. I think Infinity War, if you get to watch part four right after, is going to be a lot of fun. But uh, having to wait a year for the next one really... Dude, that is super weak. Because, like, you know they probably almost have that movie done, if not done already. So, like, why hold on to it for a year? Like, you figure, realistically, they'll probably be making money off of uh, Infinity War for at least three or four months Mm -hmm. and it'll probably trickle down out after like six months. Yeah. So like after it trickles down, like why not? Wow. You know, hit him with the second one. Yeah. Well, I think the issue is, uh, so you got Ant-Man and the Wasp coming out and uh, Captain Marvel coming out. And I think both of those movies are going to establish powers and abilities between those characters and the world that they're going to use to end up undoing and defeating Thanos in the fourth one. So they have to have which a which lot more makes sense, and I like the I like the character. Um, I, I like the lady, the actress that plays the Wasp, Brie Larson. Um, oh no, uh, Evangeline Lilly. No, yeah, yeah, I like her. She's she's pretty cool. Brie Larson is also um, uh, pretty good. What's funny, and this is like a huge sidebar, but Brie Larson, I didn't know, was like the girlfriend of. The ex girlfriend of Scott Pilgrim in Scott Pilgrim versus the World. Oh, okay. Had no idea. Like, he's the rock star chick. Mm. I was like, damn, this chick is like, you know, hot. And then my wife is like, oh yeah, that's Brie Larson. And I'm like, holy crap, she got way hotter. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, yeah, I was just like, yeah, I was like, you know, that, that was cool. Yeah. I actually really like Scott Pilgrim versus the World though. Yeah, I think, As, uh, like I said, huge sidebar. <laughs> I think but, I would have enjoyed uh, uh, Infinity War so much more if they didn't release movies that were coming out in the future. If they didn't tell you what was in the pipeline, they didn't announce Guardians oh, no, 3, yeah. totally need to keep it in the wraps. Spider-Man 2, and Black Panther 2. If none of that yeah, was released... Like, okay, so Black Panther's not dead, and yeah. Spider-Man's not dead. Yeah. And that, that was what I was thinking, or, the whole ending. Well, at a minimum, it's like, okay, so maybe there's another Black Panther, which, how is that if there's no more flowers? Two, is is there another Spider-Man? Or are they already fast-forwarding the Miles Morales already? Well, that's you know? that was one of the things. If, if I didn't know... Because uh, they, they've established uh, Daniel uh, Donald Glover is Miles Morales' uncle in the first movie. Yeah. And so it's like, mm-hmm. oh, maybe they're going to do it. Maybe they're going to pull him in. But knowing that they have three movies coming out with all those characters that are dead, it's like, well, there's no way that they're going to replace all the main characters from these three standout movies. One movie I could see them doing, but three of them, it's like, no, that's right. way too much. They're clearly coming back. No, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I, I honestly completely agree. Like, they need to keep that stuff under wraps a lot better. Because, I mean, like, People like you or I that are, you know, have the sense to like look ahead. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, okay, ruined. Yeah. You know, maybe for somebody else, like they don't keep track of stuff like that and they're just like, oh, I have no idea what's going to happen. Yeah. Well, I mean, for them, like that's totally cool. But, you know, for me, like I want to know what's going to happen in the next eight years. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, what's coming out? What do I have to look forward to? And then I'm like, oh, no, I just ruined my dreams. <laughs> you no, know, I just ruined yeah. this movie. Yeah. And a lot yeah. of it, a lot of it isn't even like, you don't even have to search that hard for. It just stands out to me because I'm interested in it. Like I'll see something mm-hmm. on Reddit or I'll see something on Facebook that'll just like pop up. I'm like, oh, that's interesting. Black Panther 2 is already announced. When then he dies. And it's like, oh, well, it's clearly not dead. <laughs> You're like, he's not, per- <laughs> he's not permanent. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, anyways, uh, you guys, you and Amanda, you guys, this podcast is pretty good. Uh, I disagree with uh, your Quiet Place review and your uh, Black Panther <laughs> opinions, but that's all right. I definitely check it out. The, con- the conversational list, right? Yeah, conversational list. And uh, but I think on uh, on, um, on a SoundCloud, it's uh, the conversationalist because somebody already had conversationalist, and I was like, what the heck? <laughs> yeah, uh, we're we're uh, 
or soundcloud.com slash that conversational. And then you guys can follow us at I seen that, uh, I seen that pod on Twitter and like us on Facebook. And we will be back with, uh, the Hunger Games part or part three, part one and two. It's a terrible oh, wow. number system they got going there, but the me and Taylor, <laughs> we did, uh, we watched, we did the whole series of the Hunger Games and the last two movies are so boring. We just did them together instead of breaking them up. So that should be what's coming out oh, on Saturday. Else? Yeah. <laughs>